All right, George, how's it going? We're back. We are back for another question for you. Just had a little burrito, so I'm energized. How many breakfasts do you have each each day? What does that mean? What I you, know you what like you, breakfasts. What are you trying to say? I'm not saying anything. I just want to know how many <laughs> breakfasts you eat a day. Not a hobbit, dude. <laughs> I feel like you have minimum of one, but probably two. I get hungry. Yeah. When, you're, when your day starts at 4 a.m., like mine did today, yeah. Tyler, I've been... I've been up five and a half, half hours. Yeah. I'm allowed to have a little breakfast burrito. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, another question I'd love to get your input on is where do you see the future of pickleball? And that encompasses everything, the professional play, the league play, the rec play, and just kind of pickleball as a whole. Yeah, that's a, that's a loaded question. Um, I mean, you... you uh, you hear about Padel. Am I saying it right? I feel like I, I say it right and everyone says it wrong. Is it Paddle or Padel? I say Padel. I say Padel as well. Yeah. Uh, you, you hear about Padel, how many players they have in Europe, uh, how it's coming to the States. Uh, it's kind of the same uh, trajectory as, as Pickleball. I, I still see Pickleball um, as the easier, friendlier, uh, more community-based sport than, than Padel. Uh, I don't know if, you, if you've... You know, for those that haven't watched Padel, it's it, it takes a, quite the skill set. And now, I'm am I saying that you can't do? It? I mean, you obviously can, right? But my I, thoughts on that, I'm going to interject right now, or real quick. Um, I love Padel. I've played it. It's a lot of fun. I have a friend who is a top five American player. He's gone overseas to play and everything like that, and he's now playing pickleball. Um, but I love it. But looking at Padel through a spectator eyes. In a business eyes, it just doesn't seem like it's scalable to the to the same degree, degree that pickleball is. I agree. In order to build out one padel court, it's around a hundred thousand dollars or more. Yeah. Um, you have to put up the walls and then the stands and everything like that. It's just so much more difficult to uh, play and pickleball. It's very. It's more it, similar is, to tennis. Is the court bigger? Than, yes, it's, than it's quite a bit bigger. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, in terms of real estate space, it's bigger. Um, and viewership, spectators, t- nobody wants to look through a glass to see people play. I mean, it's like racquetball. The viewing wasn't great, but it's a lot of fun to play. And so that's where I always fall back on is just um, the playability, the view ability, view ability, the sponsorship. It just doesn't seem like it's as appealing as Pickleball yeah. is. Which we're, we're starting to see, uh, you know, Steve Kuhn took a gamble and, and said that as far as viewability that – Pickleball would be more popular than Major League Baseball. And it, I mean, we saw it uh, with the PP, PPA event that was broadcast on CBS. What was it 1.25 million viewers? Something like that, yeah. And, and so for for the people that that uh, that say that, that pickleball is not meant for TV, you haven't seen pro pickleball in, in real life. Not only that, but I think the more that pickleball becomes mainstream and people actually play it, once they play it, they're able to understand the the nuances, the logistics, everything exactly. about it. Um, but if you haven't played it, I mean, just like any other sport, if you haven't played a sport, then you probably don't enjoy watching it. Uh, but if you do play it or you're, you're familiar with it, then you're more yeah. inclined to play it. Yeah, and, and so I, I just think pickleball's growth is... is uh, I mean, we're it's on a rocket ship right now. So on a on a percentage basis, um, I think the past few years we've been growing. We as a pickleball ha- have been growing. We um, are pickleball. We are pickleball. <laughs> I think twenty to thirty percent year over year. Does that sound right? Uh, yeah, that, that okay. sounds right. So, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, what do you think the next five years looks like in a terms in terms of year over year growth? It, you know, it, it, it's crazy to say it in five years, there could be 100 million players, but that's that's the track that we're on right what now. What are we at right now with 30, 36.8 million? Okay, so you the think number. there's a possibility of 100 million players in five years? Uh, that would be a third of the country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That, it's crazy to say. That's a big number. It's But 36.8 million is a crazy number. Yeah. And, and that's not just people that have played, that's people that have played at least eight times. Mm hmm. Right. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know because I've never seen anything anything like this. Okay. So in terms of participation, you think we'll continue with the twenty to thirty percent year over year growth? There has to be a, a certain point where we plateau. Okay. What's that a hundred million 
throughout the world or just the United States? Because I was in the U.S. right now. U.S. Yeah, that I, I would give it a shot in, in five years throughout the world. Just again, it's it's picking. I mean, Canada is experiencing the same growth. Yeah, it's barely hitting Europe. Australia is picking it up like crazy. Asia um, is picking it, up. Right, even Mexico. I, I started to see uh, outdoor facilities um, start to pop up all over Mexico. Mm-hmm. So I, I I just but again in in the terms of what it compares to, I mean, what is, what are soccer numbers throughout the world? Right. I'd be interested to see. I'd, I'd have to look that up right now. Yeah. I mean, this is a podcast we can pull out our phones, right? Yeah. And see the, the stats there. What so, are we looking at? Uh, participation? Participation in soccer. In soccer. <laughs> we'll do some music while we wait. <laughs> Found it. All right, what do you have? Forty million players uh, throughout the world is what what FIFA says. Gotcha. So, and I have a stat that says between three point five and four billion people worldwide claiming to be fans. Is pickleball more accessible than soccer? Definitely. So why not? Yeah. Hundred million in three years. You hear it. You heard it. In three years or five years? Five years. Me 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 me. No. All right. What's the one? No. It it, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, but I I do I do see the numbers uh, growing because it. I mean, I'm almost like a pickleball missionary. Everywhere I go. You're preaching. Preaching pickleball. Do you play pickle? I mean, I, I rip my car. Do you play pickleball? I'm always asking people. Uh, and, and so it's... Okay, moving on past the participation numbers. Viewership. What do you think in terms of prize money? So right now, it's kind of hard to quantify because uh, most of the time when tournaments announce their prize money, they do the total amount of prize money. And so that's divided up in between yeah. different categories. Um, so I would say for an average tournament, the total prize money... Right now is anywhere between two to three hundred thousand or so for a tournament. But and once again, that's divided up between singles, mix, and doubles. And men or gender yep. doubles. So three categories. Where do you see that number going to in the next three to five years? So let's say it is three hundred thousand per tournament. Yeah, I mean, I I think. I I listen after listening to that Bucks owner that pulled out his money and he said that it, there's going to be better investment in pickleball. I think there's going to be somebody if, if the, the PPA or major league don't figure out how to pay the players more, someone's going to come in and do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're seeing then the UFC right now. Um, uh, I think it, so what's considered more to you, it, how much more would that need to be? Would I get out of bed if I knew that I would win the chance to win five to $10,000 a tournament for first place? If I was a pro player, probably not. So I, I think, I mean, twenty five thousand to thirty thousand an event is where we'd have to get to. Okay. Um, I don't see that being a realistic number with how much sponsorship money and viewerships coming into the sport. Um, and we we don't even have the the major players. You're going to see major players coming in like Nike, Adidas just announced their new line, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and so once once you start getting the first Nike sponsored athlete. I mean, that changes the ball game of everything, right? And so, um, I mean, at that point, I feel like, you know, Pickleball's made it. We we just uh, brought on Babel. They're, they're going heavy this year. I mean, they're big tennis. They're going very big on, on Pickleball. We saw it with Yola. I mean, who's who, who's next, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think it's unrealistic to, to think that uh, with that much viewership and TV deals with CBS and, and Amazon and ESPN, I mean, I don't see why we, you know, the, the pro circus wouldn't be able to pay the players that much. So currently, if you win Major League Pickleball, um, you're seeing anywhere from thirty to $60,000 per event. And that's on Premier. And that's already right now, yeah, yeah, at the Premier level. Yep, so give that another three to five years, and if things continue at the rate they are, I wouldn't be surprised to see it anywhere from 50 to 100 easily, if not more. So I'm 
you know, pickleball is my first racket sport I've ever played. It, you're 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 a pro in pickleball. How does it compare to tennis as far as how how many events are happening? Because I, I think we, as a consumer, I always feel like, man, that's a lot of freaking events. And I don't know if you feel like that as a player. How does it compare to tennis? Is there is there that many pro events happening in tennis? So I'm. I did play tennis. I played in college. Um, I didn't play any pro uh, tennis, so I'm a little bit familiar with it, but I didn't play in the pro tennis uh, tournament, so I'm not too familiar with it. But um, from my understanding is if you're in the top 50 or so where you're guaranteed a spot in the majors, um, they don't have that many tournaments. It's the players that are below that that are playing in the satellites, the challengers, um, mm-hmm. the qualifiers that are playing week in, week out, um, trying to get into those ma- ma- major tournaments. Because if you win, even if you lose a match at one of those majors, you're walking away with anywhere from thirty to $50,000, okay. even with a loss. Interesting. Yeah, yeah I, and I think that's why I... I uh... But personally, I think... As it stands right now, there's too many tournaments for pickleball. Yeah, for the pros. I I would agree. I used to be pretty religious about watching, you know, pickleball every weekend. Exactly. And now there's get... one every single week. It's like it doesn't make them important. Yeah, it, it's true. And I I wish there was a end of year cup or mm-hmm. I mean something that that kind of gave it a all star weekend. I I need a little break every once in a while yep. with with something different. Sure. And I think that's I think that's why MLP is is also awesome, right? I, I will always pitch for MLP, not because we're part or team owners of uh part owners of BLQK, but it's a nice break, right? Mm-hmm. We know we're not gonna see Ben Johns and Anna Lee, though I love watching them play or you know, or Anna Lee with anyone or Ben Johns with Colin. It's yep. it's great to see um, you know, different outcomes in, in, in major league. So uh, I don't know. I mean, I, that's why everyone loves March Madness is because there's so many upsets. Yeah, exactly. Happen. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, for, for, for the PPA, um, I once heard someone say that it, it needs to turn a little bit like WWE. Mm-hmm. So, a little you know, bit more a little entertaining, bit, a little, little bit more, more cat calling, a little bit more. Yeah, which we, we're starting to see a little bit. I mean, we saw our, our guy Pablo flip someone off in the stands, which is awesome. It got talked about. <laughs> um, it, you know, it, it got a lot of a lot of media, but yeah, I I I think there there has to be something that's that's different because it can't just be tournament every week anymore. It's just it, it's it's getting it's getting a little stale. Yeah, right. Love it. Yeah. Uh, future of pickleball is super bright. I, I don't know how to quantify what we've talked about, but I think we can both agree on in the next three to five years, it's going to be much yeah. more than where it is right now. Anywhere from 30 to 50% more. Well, I'm, ex- I'm excited to see uh, when older guys like you are out of the way and we get these more 14 and 15 year olds. Excuse dude. me? <laughs> You're considered an old guy on the tour. I think I'm mid level right mid-level? now. Mid level? Yeah. yeah. I guess Matt Wright. Matt Wright would be old. Yeah, I think he's. He's old. Yeah. But he's it, still good. He's still in the top those, five. Those fast hands. Yeah. And it helps he's got a good partner. But yeah. I mean, he he plays great. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. But it three to five years. I would love to see the kids that... But you've actually... Are, I mean, yes, to your point, you will see more, but you've already seen some of those players. Gabe Tardio, Wyatt Stone, Hadrian Patrickwin, Natalie Waters, Dylan Frazier. Yeah. And so there already are those players out there. I think there will be more. Um, you'll also see That's more ex-tennis players come out as yeah. well. Um, yeah, which, you know, Jack Sock, he he opened the the conversation of what could happen there, and he it, he claims that uh, next year in twenty four he'll be playing in. I I heard that he'll he wants to play he, in ten tournaments. Maybe he heard the prize money's better, so he's coming out. Yeah, we'll see. No. I don't know. Tough to say if if you're in the top fifty, which I think he was a uh, top ten at one point. That's I think he has over twelve million dollars in winnings for tennis. Yeah, that's a good good chunk of change. That's a, that's a good living, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, uh, any other thoughts on the future of pickleball? It, I mean, it's exciting, right? It, it, and it, it's it's crazy to to give a prediction because right now in pickleball, every two weeks is like a a year and changes yeah. how much how much stuff happens and, and changes and and the great thing is there's innovators at the top. Um, 
trying to figure out how to make this sport more accessible, more accessible, more exciting, um, innovative. And, you know, as, as you mentioned earlier, if you're not innovating, you're going to get left behind. <laughs> yep. So I'm interested to see, to see, I mean, competition always makes everyone better, right? Mm-hmm. So MLP made the PPA better. Um, APP made the PPA better, right? It's, it's all the PPA made MLP better. So it'll be interesting to see, um, what is the next concept or league that takes it to the next level? So yeah. I think we're all just in it for the ride and, you know, it'll, it'll be exciting to be a part of. One thing I'll, I'll add with is I thought was funny. I was talking to this guy who was a product manager at one of the paddle companies and their goal um, increase, their goal increase for each year was, I think it was 25 to 30%. Um, which, in revenue? In revenue, yep. Which uh, seems Not like bad. a pretty good amount. Yeah. Um, but for pickleball, that's pretty average, I would say. And he left jobs to go to another massive company, but they, they did plastics. And I was talking to him afterwards, and he said his goal was literally 3% for wow. the year. And in that industry, that's normal. But if you brought that 3% to pickleball, people would laugh at you. Oh, you wouldn't yeah. be able to survive with yeah. that 3%. That's wild to think. I mean, there there's a lot of... Uh, market to, to be captured mm-hmm. um it, it, and I, and i think that's why there's there's still opportunity for new players to, and by players i mean whether they be in indoor pickleball or paddle manufacturers i mean that's why you saw companies like vatic or legacy um still be able to make waves in this space because there's so many new players mm-hmm. um and so there's there's still market uh, there's market being created every day um, and, and so pickleball is, it's the wild, wild west right now. And, and those that are set up, uh, with marketability, with funding behind them, with innovation, uh, you know, I, I think this is the year that if, if you're not doing those things, you're, you're going to get left behind. Yeah. So Love it. Thanks for your thoughts, uh, on what the future of pickleball will look like. Awesome.